My name is Ryan Riley. I live in the Meridian School District. My mother graduated from Boise High and went on to be an educator for over 20 years. My father was also an educator in the high school um, for any taught art, photography, pottery, for over 30 years. I'm a product of the California School District, so please don't hold that against me. But what I'm here to say is that I'm a friend of education. Last year, my wife and I were given the um, Nobody Award from River Valley Elementary. It's an award that's given to parent volunteers that nobody has done more. I tell you this because I'm a friend of public education. I think public education is an important part of our child, ch children development. The problem is I'm representing currently the Fresco Arts Academy, which is a private school. Fresco Arts Academy is, is designed to be able to help foster the arts that is missing out of the public schools. Um, I want to present a solution to you. You've asked for solutions and not just hearing the same thing. There was a, an example of vouchers. Vouchers is a hot topic in the, uh, in the news today. In fact, uh, my Google Alert sent me 10 new articles written today on, on vouchers. Um, but there's a good example of what vouchers can be. Douglas County School District in Colorado has created a voucher program that's 75% of the current cost of education that is, that is given back to the, to, the, to the parents. Interestingly enough, in 1997, the Idaho Attorney General stated that if the monies were returned to the, to the parents for services not rendered by the state, then a voucher program could be feasible. It's not given to the schools to benefit the schools. It's given back to the parents as services not rendered. But I'd like to present a way that we can create a partnership between private and public schools. Um, Idaho State um, Statute Title 33, Chapter 2, Section 3 creates an opportunity for funding of dual enrollment. If there's an opportunity to create a partnership between a private and a public school, as a dual enrollment, we have the opportunity to increase funds for that public school based on attendance and academic standards that could also benefit the parents who are looking for a different choice. We've heard a lot about choice from charter schools today. I'm presenting an opportunity for us to consider a choice in the form of vouchers. I love the public school district. I want you to know that, but I think elements are missing that private schools and other forms of school choice can be able to participate in. Please consider what Douglas County School District is doing as a way to provide additional choice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dar Oberding. I didn't think I saw him. Anna Marie Rhodes, followed by Jennifer Look. Hi. Um, Welcome to the committee. Thank you. Um, really pleased to be able to be here today and to be able to have my voice heard. Can you talk um, into the microphone, please? Sure, I'm sorry. Um, I'm really pleased to be able to be here and to be able to have my voice um, heard. I'm from New York City originally, and I've been in Idaho for a little over five years now. Um, I have children who have attended um, Boise schools. And um, I've been an educator of sorts, like I tutored my fellow students when I was in elementary school. I recently signed up to tutor at um, CWI's Adult Basic Education. Um, they have a VISTA campus um, near where I live. I think it's important when we talk about education, not just to focus on um, young students and elementary school and early education. I think that's critical. I think it's really important to educate um, people straight out of the womb, you know? Here's the world, let me teach you some words, let me show you what um, the world has to offer, let me, um, you know, expose you to culture, different languages, um, textures, colors, experiences, all of that's really critical to human development and, the, and it benefits society when we do that. Um, we, we also just don't want to leave out adults, people who may feel that they have been left behind. Everyone is someone's child. So I love the idea of like this No, no Child Left Behind Act. I think like it just it sounds really good to me. Like I listen to I just the, the title. I haven't read the whole thing. I don't know what that's about. But having um, having taken the the tape test, having spent a long time out of school, having to go back and then 
not having done well, being able to go into a place like uh, College of Western Idaho Adult Basic Education Campus and being given the opportunity to extend my skills. As soon as I took the test and I, I just went through the orientation and took it, they confirmed, yes, I'm at a high school graduate level. That was great for me. At this point, I have a chance to give back and take a look at someone, um, sit with someone who isn't there yet and help them to get there. And I think that when we talk about education, we really want to consider the fact that um, adults are in education, have education opportunities as well. I also wanted to bring up the um, idea that technology has a lot to offer. Um, we, I heard someone talking about um, musical education. There's a wonderful program on PlayStation called Guitar Hero, and I saw something on, um, it's called um, Shark Tank, and they people present their business ideas. and. Um, there was a computer program, and it, it showed people how, like the, how to play a guitar with the, the notes on the screen so that they could master the program. These things help, and I think that having a technology component in education is important. I think that having students do classes completely online takes away some of the social interaction and benefits that they would otherwise have in a classroom setting, and I think that that's an important part of human development um, for people to be able to interact with each other, to learn to be tolerant of each other's differences. And I also think, just one last point, I'm really sorry, that um, there are programs that enable a high school graduate to have a marketable skill and graduate with a certificate beyond just a high school diploma. And um, considering programs like that so that a student graduates with not just the ability to you know, do any entry level position that's available, but also have a professional certificate, where students show the ability to accomplish that, having those programs offered in high schools is something that's been done in other states and should be available to students everywhere, and I, I hope in Idaho. If and you could I please hope, close. I'm sorry, thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there a Jennifer look? Welcome to the committee. Thank you. Thank you, chairman and committee members. I'm, I'm, <laughs> hello, I'm Jennifer Luke. Um, I'm a parent. I'm here to represent my children and their teachers because a lot of teachers aren't here, able to be here today due to the timing of this meeting and represent themselves during this hearing. First, um, my children go to public school here in, um, in Ada County, um, and um, what stands out to me is their large class sizes. They, my kids had um, 40 students in an honors math class last year. Um, I have twins. Um, one excelled and did excellent um, with just the basic teaching. The other twin started falling behind with not having enough time to get that um, teaching and extra teaching that he could get because students were lining up at the teacher's desk for ask for questions. Um, and luckily, I am educated and I was able to help my son become and do better in math and to where he is now in middle school, being successful in math, um, excelling straight A students. And so I feel. Um, that class size does matter. I think that to me is the number one importance that we are not having good class sizes due to lack of funding. Um, I am a parent that feels responsible for the actions of my children and their success in school. Um, I think what charter schools have um, is better class sizes and parents that took an initiative, initiative to be involved in their child's education. That's what charter schools have differently maybe than public. Not every parent just sent their, you know, everyone sends their kids to which school their um, area is allotted for. Um, okay. <laughs> I took a different approach. Um, I did send my kids to public schools 
Um, again, just wanted to let you know my twins are successful in academics and they're prospering in, a, in an environment that's diverse. Um, the teachers certainly didn't get involved in teaching for making money in Idaho, Be but because they love to teach. My kids have been products of quality teachers and have been successful by our stress of importance to education. And any parent and student that takes advantage of these excellent teachers that we have in Idaho will succeed. But ultimately, it is up to the parents taking responsibility and the students to take the initiative. I encourage members of the committee to attend public schools in our districts in their districts and see just how excellent and valuable teachers really are. Consider what kind of environment you are creating in the public schools by constantly degrading them. They are our solution, not the problem. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Luke. <clears throat> that concludes who I uh, had signed up. Is there anyone out there that signed up that didn't get a chance to testify? Very good. Well, I'd like to thank everyone in the room for their attention. Uh, I thought we had a good discussion. Oh, I've got one more. If you would identify yourself, please. One more, Mr. Chairman. I'm Dallas Gudgel. I did sign up and I said I wasn't going to testify, but so I don't have prepared remarks, but I thought I would bring a couple of remarks forward. Um, I'm Dallas Gudgel. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, thank you for holding this hearing. I think it's uh, a great thing to do. Um, I'm representing myself and my three-year-old twins who I'm hoping um, when they are school age are going to be able to go to a school, public school of choice. Um, I don't know if they will be able to because there's a long waiting list and if they don't win a lottery they may not get in. So the good news is that my local public school and the traditional public school is a great school. I've been teaching for about five years and I've been in a number of great public traditional schools in this valley and I currently teach at a charter school. Um, I made a bid for uh, joining you in this body last year and I can almost certainly tell you that I lost that bid um, over this issue. So you guys have a very hard decision to make. Um, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of issues on this and it's very complex and it's, it can be pretty divisive as you know. And so I feel like uh, in my heart of hearts, what I know is that if we level the playing field for charter schools, promote charter schools, and um, you know, fund them equitably, whatever it takes, whatever it takes to have per student, per pupil funding equal, um, facilities equal, the ability to borrow money from levies equal, um, I think that those are all good choices for you to make in this, in, in this hard, hard decision. Um, you know, I'm a union guy. I've been a union guy, come from a long union line. Um, and so another reason why this becomes really divisive, um, when I was in the traditional public schools, my 50 or $60 a month was taken out as payroll deduction for the union. Um, and as if it was my social security or taxes that I'm paid on a payroll deduction. Um, times that $800 or $600 a year times all of the teachers in Idaho. It's, it's not popular for me to say, but um, Mother Jones is one of my ultimate heroes, you know, up there with Martin Luther King. But I'm not so sure that she would uh, look favorably at the IEA right now. So I'm hoping that um, we can look beyond some of these corporate special interests that have kind of overgrown and become powerful. And I think it's that power that Mother Jones might not, uh, not appreciate. So um, leveling the playing fields for charter schools, I think, is, is the right way to go. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, Chairman DeBornot, any closing comments? Again, I'd like to thank everyone for participating. Um, committee, we heard a lot today, and or committees. Uh, we've got some things to take to heart. With that, we're adjourned.